Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can blur out a face in DaVinci Resolve by using tracking techniques. So you'll see in the background of this shot that there's a man walking kind of towards the camera. There's a bit of a natural blur just due to the fact that the camera is focusing on the guy in the foreground and not the background. But in a way you can still kind of recognize that person's face, so I'm going to try to blur that out even more. Note that over time the guy's position changes over time as well, so you can't just really blur one space, you need to track the facial movement across time. So the best place to do this is going to be over on the color tab of Resolve 16. So click over there and you're going to want to pick a frame to track from. So in this case I'm going to go to the last frame of this video because that is where the person is the most clear there. We'll set up a power window to kind of mask and blur that area out and then track in reverse so that we can blur that person's face out over the entire shot. So you can click on power windows over here in order to add a window and I'm going to use the oval shaped tracking window because a person's head is kind of round so it makes sense. So for the tracking window the white line is the edge of your window and then on top of that with the thinner line and below that the other thinner line is the softness edges. So having these extra lines on top and bottom of the main boundary will add a bit of softness to your tracking window. You may or may not want that depending on what kind of effect you're trying to generate with your tracking window. Uh, for now I'll just leave them on there. The important thing is going to make sure that the person's face is fully blurred out though. Make sure that the face is always inside of the inner softness boundary and we can position that over the person's head and click on one of these points in order to resize the tracking window. So I'll put it right there, larger than it needs to be for the person's head. Just resize it to where you think it's appropriate. And then what we need to do is add some blur that will only affect these tracking window areas. So to blur, go over on the tabs two over from the power window to the blur tab. And we need to increase the radius here of the blur. So from 50, we can just ramp that way up to something like 1.0 which should significantly blur out everything inside of that power window area. So now if we scroll through the video, you'll notice that the blur is there at all frames, but it doesn't actually move with the person yet, so we need to add in tracking. So going back to the last frame of this video, wherever you're using as your tracking reference point, click over on the tracking tab, which is between window and blur, and now you're going to want to hit the track reverse or track forward button, which will have the power window try to track this person's face, matching each frame to the frame before or in front of it, and seeing where the difference in position lies. So I'm going to track reverse here with all the settings checked. If you do run into any issues, sometimes turning off something like 3D will make the tracking less complicated, but also can get you better results uh, due to making the tracking simpler. So I'm going to track in reverse here. So it looks like it didn't go quite right for me there. It may be because the tracking window is too large here. So I'll go back to the reference frame, which once again is the end of my video clip. And I'm actually going to shrink this window down so that it knows we're trying to track the face. Making it something like that should be fine. We'll also try turning off 3D and seeing if that makes a difference. And now I'll hit track reverse to redo the tracking and see if it works a little better here. And I would say that is a significant improvement. So that man we're trying to blow the face out of comes into view right around there after the foreground man is no longer blocking him and we can see that the power window is going to keep following him across time. And if we scrub through the timeline we can see that at pretty much all of the frames it's doing a very good job of actually tracking that man's face. So that would be essentially all we'd have to do with a simple clip like this. If you do run into the situation where on some frames the tracking kind of falls out of space, you can go to a frame and actually manually adjust the position of the tracker or the size of it. So you can drag it to where it needs to be. And then you can track again from that position. So I could go to here after adjusting it a little bit and I can continue tracking in reverse from that point. And I could track in reverse or track forward from that point, which will go ahead and make the adjustments as needed. So one more thing, if after a certain point during the shot you want to turn off the blur because it's no longer needed, the person has already left the shot, uh, then you can use keyframes, which are in this box down here, in order to set that up. So I'm going to click on the corrector one's diamond keyframe to enable that for keyframing. I'm going to go to the first frame here, which already has a keyframe. And I'm going to click that twice to make sure that this is set as a keyframe. And what I mean by that is that the keyframe has the corrector enabled here. I'm going to go to where the person enters the shot right here, click twice to set a keyframe again uh, as it's enabled. And actually at the start I want that to be disabled. So going back to the first frame, I turn that off. 
So now the power window doesn't actually come into play until right around there. Um, and then I just want to make sure that that power window is enabled for the rest of the shot, which it is. If you need to re-enable it or disable it, just click on the corrector enabler right there in the power window in order to re-enable or disable it at any point during your clip. Okay, so now we can also set keyframes for the blur so that before the power window actually comes into play, it's completely disabled. And then when the power window comes into play, we enable the blur with the power window so that it blurs out so that it still blurs out the facial region. So at the point where the corrector node is enabled, I'm going to leave the keyframing diamond checked there, so it should be red, and then I'm gonna take the radius and I'm just gonna set it once again to basically whatever value, 99, 0 0.98, whatever you had it set at, you just need to set the value one more time. And then that will automatically create a blurring keyframe. So uh, I believe that's under color corrector here. So you see the keyframe for there. And then because we want the blur effect to be enabled immediately, as in occurs over one frame, I'm going to hit left on the keyboard to go one frame behind where the blur keyframe is set. And then I'm going to set the radius here to 0 0.5, which will immediately create that second color corrector keyframe. So now if I go between these two frames, you'll notice that the blur is enabled here in this shot, but it's not enabled the frame before that. So now if we play the video clip back from frame zero, there's going to be no blur or no power window until it gets to that point where the person actually moves into the frame and it starts tracking. And then, then after that point, the blur and the tracking take effect and the person's face is blurred out. So let's play that back here. So you can see there's no blur yet. And then bam, the tracking window is enabled. The blur is there. It tracks the person's face across time. And then right after that point where the power window is enabled, the blur kicks in and it's tracking the person's face across time in the shot. So that's really the basics of how you can blur a person's face out using power windows and tracking across time in any video shot. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.